What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to break down the roles and functions of internal computing components, such as the motherboard, firmware, RAM, CPU, GPU storage, and network interface cards. All right, so let's begin with the motherboard, which is also known as the system board. So think of the motherboard as the computer's central nervous system. It's a large printed circuit board that connects and communicates with all other components. And the key purposes of the motherboard are as follows. It provides connections and interfaces. The motherboard has slots and connectors for all internal components like the CPU, RAM, storage drives, and expansion cards. It also provides connections for external peripherals like USB devices, monitors, and keyboards. The motherboard also provides power distribution. It distributes electrical power from the power supply to all connected components, ensuring that each part of the computer gets the power it needs. And it's also a communication hub. The motherboard enables communication between the CPU, the RAM, storage, and other components via data buses and chipsets. Now, the chipsets on the motherboard, they play a vital role in controlling data flow between these components and common chipsets are divided into what is called the north bridge which handles faster communications like between the cpu and the ram and then we have what is called the south bridge which handles slower connections like usb ports and hard drives so essentially the motherboard serves as the foundation of the computer holding all other components together and enabling them to work in harmony all right, next let's talk about firmware, specifically the BIOS or the basic input output system. So the BIOS is firmware that's built into the motherboard and it's responsible for booting up the computer and managing the essential hardware settings. And the key purposes of the BIOS are as follows. It does system initialization. So when you power on your computer, the BIOS performs a series of checks called the power on self test. And this ensures all essential hardware components are functioning correctly. Then it also does boot sequence control. So the BIOS tells the computer where to find the operating system by setting the boot order, such as booting from the hard drive, the USB or over the network. And then it also does hardware configuration and management. So the BIOS manages low level settings for hardware, including system time, CPU settings, and memory configuration. Modern computers, they often use what is called a UEFI or a unified extensible firmware interface instead of a traditional BIOS. And UEFI is more advanced with a graphical interface and support for larger storage drives. So all in all, the BIOS or the UEFI is a crucial element in starting up the computer and providing the low-level interface between the hardware and the operating system. All right, now let's discuss RAM or random access memory. So RAM is a type of volatile memory, meaning it temporarily stores data that the CPU needs quick access to while performing tasks. Unlike permanent storage, data in RAM is erased when the computer is turned off. And the key purposes of RAM are as follows. Once again, it provides temporary data storage. So RAM stores data that is actively being used or processed by the CPU, such as program instructions, and open files. And this allows the CPU to quickly retrieve the necessary data without accessing slower storage drives. And then RAM also has a faster performance. So the more RAM a system has, the better it can handle multiple tasks simultaneously, which improves overall system performance. When you open a program or a file, it is loaded from the storage drive into the RAM so the CPU can access it quickly. So for example, if you have a eight gigabytes of RAM, your computer can load more data simultaneously improving multitasking and speed. All right, next let's talk about the CPU or the central processing unit. So the CPU is often referred to as the brain of the computer. It performs calculations, executes instructions, and processes data, allowing software to function. And the key purposes of the CPU are as follows. So once again, it processes instructions. So the CPU executes instructions from software programs and performs calculations from simple math to complex computations. It is also the control 
unit and ALU. So the CPU has two main components. First one is the control unit, which directs operations. And then you have what is called the arithmetic logic unit, and this performs arithmetic and logical operations. Also, another purpose of the CPU is clock speeds and cores. So the performance of a CPU is often determined by its clock speed, which is measured in gigahertz, which indicates how many cycles per second it can perform and its number of cores, which allows for what is called parallel processing. So for example, a quad core CPU can handle multiple tasks simultaneously, improving performance in multitasking and demanding applications like video gaming and editing. All right, let's move on to the GPU or the graphics processing unit. So the GPU, this is a specialized processor designed to handle graphics rendering, image processing, and other complex visual tasks. And the purpose of the GPU are as follows. So it renders graphics and video. The GPU offloads graphical tasks from the CPU, allowing for smoother rendering of visuals and applications like video games, 3D modeling, and video playback. And then it also serves as a parallel processor processing power. So unlike the CPU, which is optimized for sequential processing, the GPU is designed for parallel processing, making it highly efficient at performing multiple calculations at the same time. And there are two types of GPUs. The first one is called an integrated GPU. And this is built into the CPU and shares memory with the system. And this is suitable for general use like web browsing, streaming, and basic office tasks. And then we have what is called a dedicated or a discrete GPU you, which is what you see on your screen right here. And this is a separate component with its own memory, which is known as VRAM and processing power. And it's designed for more demanding tasks like gaming, video editing, and machine learning. So for users who need better graphical performance, such as gamers and video editors, having a discrete GPU is essential. All right, now let's talk about storage. So storage is where all data, including the operating system, applications, and user files are permanently saved. Unlike RAM, storage is non-volatile, meaning data remains even when the computer is turned off. And the key purposes of storage devices are as follows. So you have what is called the hard disk drive or the HDD. And this is a traditional storage device that uses spinning magnetic disks to read and write data. And hard disk drives are cost effective for large storage needs, but they are slower compared to newer technologies. And then we have what is called an SSD or a solid state drive. And SSDs, they use flash memory instead of spinning disks, allowing for faster data access and improved performance. They are more reliable, they consume less power, and they have quicker boot times compared to hard disk drives. So for example, if you save the document on your computer, it is stored on either an HDD or an SSD. Now, while hard disk drives offer more storage space for the price, SSDs provide much faster performance, making them popular for operating systems and frequently access data. All right, finally, let's cover what is called the network interface card or the NIC. So a NIC, this is a hardware component that allows a computer to connect to a network, such as a local area network or the internet. And the key purposes of the NIC are as follows. So it offers network connectivity. So the NIC facilitates communication between the computer and other devices over a network, enabling tasks like internet browsing, file sharing, and network printing. And there are two types of NICs. You have what is called a wired NIC, and this connects via an Ethernet cable and typically offers a stable and fast network connection. And then we have what is called a wireless NIC, and this uses Wi-Fi to connect to a network without the need for cables, offering mobility, but potentially lower speeds compared to wired connections. And then another purpose of the NIC is you have onboard versus expansion cards. So Many motherboards come with an onboard NIC that is built directly into the motherboard. However, expansion cards can be added to provide additional network capabilities or enhanced performance. Whether wired or wireless, the NIC plays a crucial role in enabling network communication for computers, allowing them to access resources both locally and online. So in conclusion, the key internal components of a computer each play a specific role. The motherboard serves as the central hub connecting all components. The BIOS initiates system boot and manages hardware settings. RAM temporarily stores data for quick access. The CPU processes instructions and handles tasks. The GPU manages graphics and parallel processing. Storage devices like hard disk drives and solid state drives store data for long term. And the NIC enables network 
network communication. Now, understanding these components and their functions is foundational for building, troubleshooting, and optimizing computers, and it is a key part of the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and do some of this check on learning. So the first question is, which internal computing component is primarily responsible for managing all the instructions a computer needs to perform tasks? Would it be the motherboard? Would it be the central processing unit? Would it be the random access memory? Or would it be the network interface card? And the answer is, it is the CPU or the central processing unit. So remember, the CPU is often referred to as the brain of the computer because it handles the execution of instructions and processes all tasks given to the computer. While other components like the motherboard, RAM, and NIC play important roles in the system, the CPU is primarily responsible for the core processing and computing tasks. Next question, what is the main function of the motherboard in a computer system? Is it to store data temporarily for quick access? Is it to display graphics and images on a monitor? Is it to connect and allow communication between different internal components? Or is it to provide network connectivity? And the answer is it connects and allows communication between different internal components. So the motherboard, which is also known as the system board, or if you're dealing with an Apple machine, they call it a logic board. But either way, it acts as the main circuit board that interconnects all other components, such as the CPU, RAM, GPU, storage drives, and the network cards. It enables communication and power distribution to each component, allowing them to work together as a functional computer system. And our final question is, which type of network interface card is most likely to provide faster and more stable internet connectivity? Would it be an onboard wireless NIC, an expansion wireless NIC, an onboard wired NIC, or an expansion wired NIC? And the correct answer would be an onboard wired network interface card. Wired network connections are generally faster and more stable than wireless connections due to the direct physical connection to the network. An onboard wired NIC integrated into the motherboard is more efficient than wireless options in terms of speed and stability, particularly for high bandwidth tasks. Expansion wired NICs can also be fast and stable, but the key factor is the wired nature of the connection itself.